Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to Inside Strategic Coach with you, Dan Sullivan. Dan, I'm excited because today we're going to talk about something that you have talked on and off about for a number of years called capabilism, which is a created term, I believe. But the idea behind it is one that I find very inspiring. So just to kick us off, can you describe or, or define what is capabilism? Yeah, well, I've been a lifelong history buff, and the dominant contentious issue in the world ever since I was born was the issue of capitalism and the people who are more or less opposed to capitalism. And I've read all the books, the major books and the major thinkers of the people who think that capitalism is generally a negative force in the world and that there has to be a replacement for the system which seems to create one enormous amounts of inequality because from an outside standpoint, it looks like a lot of people really profit enormously from capitalism and it creates this wide gap between the wealthiest people and the people who have far less. And there's lots of images which basically come from the 19th century of brutal work hours, brutal regimented labor, whether it's in factories or it's in large office buildings, and that it's taken all the joy out of life and that things used to be wonderful. This is very mythical. When you realize how much capitalism has actually improved the planet and how the general quality of life has gone up since capitalism really got started. As I followed this along about 20 years ago, I said, you know, there's no resolution to this discussion. There's no breakthrough in this discussion. The, the people who are for capitalism seem almost religiously fanatical about it, and the people who are against capitalism are also very, very doctrinaire, very, very dogmatic. And it seems to consume the general political framework of the planet. And whenever something seems irresolvable, I think of a line, I think it was Einstein, he said that you can't solve a problem at the level of the problem. You've got to get yourself out of the problem discussion, and you've got to entertain something from an entirely new way. So I, I began just observing what I see in the entrepreneurial world. And I've got a very unique perspective because for the more than 40 years, my sole focus of my own entrepreneurial activity has been other entrepreneurs and how they go about establishing themselves, first of all, as an entrepreneur, that is departing from employment mm -hmm. and being in the marketplace, but then actually growing. And how do they grow? And the word capability kept occurring to me as I was noticing that entrepreneurs grow by expanding their own personal capabilities and then having such success that they can actually use surplus earnings. You know, they make more than they need personally, and they can use part of the surplus earnings to actually acquire the capabilities of other people in the form of team members or specialists out in the marketplace, which has become significantly easier since we have the internet because you can now have team members in the broadest sense of the word. You can have team members anywhere on the planet and you can communicate with them and you can cooperate digitally. So about 20 years ago, and then specifically in 2004, I wrote a little essay, and it's called Capabilism. And I said that the central force of human progress, and this would be right from the beginning, it was the growth of individual and then organizational capability, and that this is the central force on the planet. And as this force, which started at the earliest stages, when there were very few human beings, but there is evidence that right off the bat, 
there was an emphasis on the people who were good at things being focused on those things. Initially, it was law and gender lines because men were stronger and they were able to focus on hunting and warfare. And then women were able to focus on the maintenance of life, daily life. You know, it went from hunting, it went to agriculture, and then it became more and more sophisticated, and then cities grew up, and then there were also the capabilities that were needed. And I said the one common factor when I look back from start to finish is capability, and that the most successful individuals, the most successful groups, the most successful societies were people where there was this constant buildup of cooperating capabilities. So capitalism is not the central force on the planet. Capitalism and capitalism is one of the capabilities that's part of capitalism, as is democracy, as is science, as is technology, and then all the hundreds of other industrial capabilities that have developed in the most successful societies. This had a huge impact when I was talking to people. So I found another way of looking where if you have two things, anti and for, that means it can't be solved on that level. You have to jump to a level higher than capitalism and make capitalism a subunit of a much larger force, and capitalism was the force that I see. So, Dan, would you say one of the reasons why capitalism works, although some people would argue with that, is because it makes good use of individual and organizational capabilities? Is it a system that is better at using those things than perhaps other systems? Yeah, much better. I mean, the results are incontestable. And usually the people who hate capitalism these days can't argue against the effectiveness of capitalism, but they think that it also destroys things. And the whole point is that whole ways of life have disappeared. To give you an idea, I grew up on a farm in northern Ohio. We had a farm that was about 80 acres. And in today's economy, an 80-acre farm is really, really hard. Small farming in the United States, for example, has almost all disappeared unless they're highly specialized and they have very, very sophisticated marketing and selling techniques. And there's a famous statistic that in the year 1900 in the United States, half the population, their work was involved with the agricultural sector, and today it's less than 3%. -hmm. And yet the output is exponentially greater that having just a third of the population is producing a much bigger result. Well, the organization of the farming activity, the agricultural thing, has just radically transformed over that period. And the almost like the mythical, happy, small farmstead, that's no longer a way of life. And so whenever you're in farm country, there's abandoned towns, there's communities that are barely subsisting now because people have left the farm and they've gone into the city where their capabilities can be much better developed. There's a worldwide movement now where beyond 50% of the people who live in urban rather than rural areas. And this is a major change. And it has to do not because of capitalism, it has to do with capitalism, that people voluntarily love being in human situations where they can focus on their best capability and then have a lot of other capabilities that support what they do. And together, they can produce much bigger results, much more enjoyable results than they could before these happen. Now, people say, well, that's because of capitalism. And I said, no, capitalism was simply the organizing structure that was used here. But the dominant motivation is that I want to be more capable. And this is universal. This is universal. I think that all the people on the planet have this desire to be more capable. Even the criminal elements, (laughs) you know, people who are up to no good, want to become more capable. It's interesting if you read 
about the inside of terrorist organizations, that they're constantly paranoid about the fact that the enemy that they would like to destroy has greater capabilities and is acquiring greater capabilities. So I think that the desire, one, for each individual to have greater capability. And what what does capability mean? It means control, and it also means results. But I think the most powerful one is cooperation, that I don't have to do things that I'm not good at. Other people can do things that they're really good at, and I can get the benefit of their results of their work, and they get the results of my work. And together we can exponentially create things that none of us can do on our own. Dan, as you're talking, this makes me think of the Hayek quote about what capitalism is. Can you say that for us? Yeah, F.A. Hayek, he was an Austrian, Viennese-born economist who won the Nobel Prize in the 40s for work he did in the 40s and 50s. I don't know the exact date when he got his Nobel Prize. He has a book which is called The Fatal Conceit, and he is talking about why capitalism has been so far superior to any other operating system. And that's the proper thing to think about capitalism. Capitalism is an operating system. It maximizes the use of the diversity of human abilities to create much larger results than any other operating system that's ever been created. And he said the tragedy about capitalism is really that it was named by its enemies because it was only the people who hated capitalism who actually named it. There was no name for this system that we call capitalism until Marx, it was really Karl Marx who came along. And he said that they say that capital is the reason for capitalism. He says capital is simply the results of the operating system. It's He says what's actually happening is that it's an ever-expanding system of increasing cooperation among strangers. So there's three things here. It's a system, and it's ever-expanding. And the central focus of the system is cooperation. But cooperation at an extraordinarily new level, it's not cooperation among friends and family. It's cooperation among strangers. And And that's the great breakthrough is that up until capitalism came along, you couldn't take advantage of the vast majority of strangers on the planet because there wasn't a system to guarantee that things would be done, people would show up on time, do what they say they're going to do, finish what they start, and more or less say please and thank you (laughs) as a result of that activity. And capitalism is the one, not only in its work structures, but its legal structures, the government structures that came along with capitalism. That's what created this amazing ability that we have in the 21st century of millions perhaps even billions of strangers, to actually cooperate with each other in a way that makes their life happen faster, easier, cheaper, and they get bigger results. And that's the system. But my whole feeling is that capitalism is simply the operating system. The central big idea is actually capitalism. And I love that definition because cooperation is, A, very appealing, and B, also my experience of what happens. And so I've had the opportunity to travel a lot this year. So I can be in completely foreign countries, hours and hours away, so India and Africa, and I can completely talk to strangers. I can relate to them. We can share funds. I can get goods in exchange for that. We happen to share a common language, which is English, which is amazing. And here I am cooperating with complete and total strangers from radically different cultures across the planet. And I was so struck in my travels this year about how miraculous is the word I want to use, but how incredible that was, that we can be joined in that and be trusting. So if I hand off my credit card, which is back here in Canada, Mm -hmm. you know, the whole system, there's this whole count on ability that can work. And so global trade is really a part of that. One other point I want to make too, because you've been thinking about this idea for a long time, is I've raised my children 
with the idea of capitalism. Mm -hmm. And that really to develop their own capabilities, find what they're uniquely talented and passionate about and to focus in on those things. Be aware of the other ones. There are a few life skills that are very useful. But that's what they have to contribute to the world and then look for the places where that is Mm -hmm. valued and where they can cooperate with others. And it's an incredible mindset to grow your children up with. Mm -hmm. And so I I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I get a sense, since I know both of your children, that they're not going to get caught up in the political conversation about left and right and capitalism and socialism. And the reason is they've escaped because of the context that you've created for them, and that it's simply about developing their own capabilities. And then moving capability into the realm of cooperation so that other people can take advantage of them at their best and they can take advantage of other people at their best and a much larger result is created. And you don't have to get into all the political discussion or anything. So to see capitalism as a subset of a larger thing, I think eliminates a lot of the static around what kind of society. We should have a society that puts a premium on freeing up the capabilities of all the individuals in society and making it easier and easier for them to cooperate on the basis of what they're great at with the basis of what other people are. And, you know, I've tested this over 14, 15 years, and I can't see a flaw in the thinking here because everywhere on the planet where I look where you see this at its best, it's all good. I would agree. There's You and I share the same mindset about this. It's like you just look at people and go, oh, wonder what your unique capability is. You know, and that's partly where our unique ability concept comes from. But then it's just this constant sense of discovery that how can I collaborate or cooperate with you? And it looks like it's such a rich mm-hmm. environment in which to live. And it's also a real appreciation for other people's uniqueness and their experience. It's like, oh, you find that really valuable. Let me learn about that. There's a joyfulness to it, at least for me. You can just ditch so many of the preconceived notion about how people are supposed to show up or women are supposed to do this, men are supposed to do that. It's just what are you capable of and how can we work together? Mm -hmm. And that's to me, first of all, it's a world I want my children (laughs) to live in. And it's one I enjoy being a part of and like to build on. So for me, capabilism is just a phenomenal way of thinking about the world and living in the world. Yeah. Well, I'm going to devote one of my small quarterly books to update this during 2018. So I'm very deeply into the topic matter right now. But I've been around the political discussion, the economic discussions now consciously for more than half a century. And I don't see any resolution on this capitalism versus anti-capitalism, and there's no solution on that level. You've got to jump to a higher level of understanding of what's really involved. So I'm really going to develop this idea, and I've got a much greater clarity. I have much more personal evidence of why looking at things from the stance of capitalism seems to exponentially elevate people's thinking, their decision-making, how they plan their lives, how they work with other people. So I think that this is a huge idea. I think it is, too. And thanks for providing that kind of expanded, much more holistic perspective, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. So as a special part of the podcast today, Dan's essay, the one that you talked about, we're going to make that available. So please go check it out at strategicpodcast.com and click on the download for that. And for more great information, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you can keep hearing this great content. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.